You've probably seen me online talking about motivation and specifically how to spark it, right? You gotta have that ambition, that dream, that desire, and you have to have that expectancy, that confidence that you can make it happen. But how do you sustain motivation over the long term? Not just spark it so you feel good each morning, but I'm talking about a series of years, right? Have you ever had a period of your life where it just was like years of major progress, major breakthroughs, major kicking butt? What was going on then? And if you've never had it, what's the magical thing that those people have who do have that? Here's what they have. They have the ability to sustain motivation. Now, I've been blessed to spend 20 years studying the science of motivation and high performance. And in that process, I've gotten to work with some of the most well-known celebrities, influencers, politicians, people who are moving the needle of the world forward. And in that process, I've also been able to serve over a million online students on this topic. So I know for sure how to help you in this area. To sustain motivation, you have to do two things you probably already know. First, you have to focus. Now, before you turn off the video or go to the next one, listen to this. A lot of people have that initial desire, but they don't look at their goals every single day. They don't revisit every single, let's say Sunday and say, how did I do this week? How did I do in my health, in my relationships, in my career? How did I do with my finances? How did I do with any other goals that I set up? You have to have that daily discipline to look and focus on what you're doing and that weekly review. You also have to have the ability to avoid distractions. One of the reasons people love my book, The Motivation Manifesto, is this teaches you how to set boundaries, how to say no, how to push away distraction to own your life again. But here's the deal. When you're focusing on something and you're really dialing in, it also brings your full presence into something. So you perform at higher levels. The second thing you need outside of focus is sane motivation is everyday effort. It's the reason you have to set up habits. It's the reason you have to have a daily routine, a morning routine. It's the reason you have to make sure you have a checklist of to-dos each day. I know that sounds so basic, but here's the funny thing. A lot of people think they'll have motivation one day, then they'll put the effort out. It's like motivation first, they think, then effort comes. The motivation inspires the effort, right? It's actually the opposite in the science of motivation. It's with daily effort that motivation comes. I like to tell people this, with momentum, comes more motivation. Don't wait for the motiva motivation to go out and take action. Actually, take action first, because just a little bit of progress, a few quick wins, drops dopamine into the brain, we start feeling good and rewarded for our behavior, and suddenly we find ourselves more motivation. So here's the thing, set three goals each day. Knock off each of those three goals. If you just did that each and every single day, you'd start feeling more personal power and you'd start getting ahead. You know, we're gonna have some fun today. We're gonna to talk about your confidence. And I am really excited to break down a framework for you. And I hope in doing this, help you realize where some of those dark days come from where you lose faith in yourself. Where those dark days come from when you know you have a lot to do, but you just don't feel like you can figure it out. Where that, you know, when you get to go out in the world again, or when you're on a Zoom and you got to show yourself to the world, you feel awkward or weird or insecure, that you, you tap back into that authentic strength, that truth of who you are. And that as you go through your life, you feel confident that no matter what life is going to throw at you, you're going to learn, you're going to figure it out, you're going to develop your capabilities. And many of you are going through really hard times right now. Sometimes it's just hard to even be positive. You can be so consumed and so overwhelmed by the negativity of other things out there. You just go, oh my gosh, this is just hard to feel good, let alone confident. I'm gonna break down a framework that I hope some of you are familiar with, but today we're gonna to talk about it in a, a, with a different lens of how to overcome insecurities and what specific daily and monthly habits you might set up for yourself to feel more strong. So this is a piece of paper. It's a framework for confidence that I have on a board in my office. See, we need reminders. We are visual humans. We need to look at something to remind ourselves of something. And so you see, I have this, I'll share this with you in a minute, but I want to get the practice in your mind. The practice in your mind is you should have instructions to yourself on a wall somewhere. So you're like, if you walked into my office and say, Brandon, why do you have a framework for confidence 
on your wall over there. And I go, well, because sometimes I don't feel confident. And what do we do when we don't feel something? Well, when we don't feel something that we want to feel, we tend to feel not good because like, I don't feel this. So I feel bad about myself or we tend to distract ourselves. I don't like this feeling, so I don't know what to do. So let me just scroll through the internet. So to me, what I've done is I've got a board over here and there's my framework for happiness. Do you have a framework for happiness on your wall yet? So that when you don't feel happy, you go, I don't feel happy, what's going on with me? And you can just go look at it and you go, ah, I've got my checklist for happiness right there. I forgot point number three. No wonder I'm not happy. What I'm trying to suggest to you is maybe you give yourself a checklist, a framework, a set of instructions for the feelings that you really want to experience in life. And when you're not feeling it, instead of retreating into the comforts of distraction, you go back to your instructions. You know what makes you feel good. And it's time to write that down and look at it more consistently. Here we go. This is my confidence checklist. This is my framework for confidence. I'm gonna break down each of these areas. And even if you've seen this maybe before with me, what I'd love to do is break down where these grow into trouble, where these are developed and strengthened, where these can be applied in your life financially, in your life, in your marriage or your relationship with your partner, with the kids. So I'm gonna break down each of those things, each of those areas. I'll use a, a card here for, for you. We're gonna start with that very first card here, clarity. Human beings are a goal-directed species. If we don't have clarity on what we want, if we don't have clarity on who we are, if we don't have clarity on what our intentions are in social relationships, it's, it's unnerving to us. Well, if you ever felt lost in life, you know that feeling, it's coming from a lack, A, often of clarity. We'll talk about this. You just don't know who you are, what you're about, what you want anymore, and, and it's unsettling when you lack clarity. It's really unsettling. You're like, ah, I, 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 don't, I don't know what I'm about anymore. And this is where midlife crises come in. Clarity is something that's it's like knowledge or a goal or an aim, but it's loosely held. What I mean by that is like, okay, that's important to me, but I can be flexible and adaptive as well. It's not this idea that you have total 100% complete certainty and you're total certain all the time. Ah, it's like that, that is a adolescent dream. No, there is no absolute certainty in anything in life, right? And so we have to go, oh, okay, I, I can have clear direction or I can be strongly committed to this thing, but lots of people who are absolutely certain about something shifts months later. So here's my question for you. On a scale of one to 10, in the last 60 days, how clear have you been about what you wanted in life? Did you start the day with some clarity about how you wanted to live that day, show up that day, treat other people that day, serve that day? So let's think about where sometimes you feel insecure. You're gonna to go to that party or that networking function, you feel insecure about yourself. Why? Because in your mind, the insecurity in, in that moment, in that situation of the networking situation or the party is coming from, I don't know who I am in here. I don't know these people and who I'm supposed to be with them. I don't know where to go or where to stand or, or who to talk to. And so just, it's unnerving. The insecurity is, I don't know what to do in this situation. Now that type of confidence or lack thereof is something that psychologists call self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is about, I don't know what to do in this situation. That's where the insecurity comes from. Positive self-efficacy self means I believe that I know what to do in the situation. I can handle this. Even if I don't know how yet, I believe I can handle this. I have the competence to take this on as an example. That's positive. But a lot of things in life you don't know how to deal with. You don't have self-efficacy because you don't know how to handle it yet. This is a new party. You don't know anybody in it. It's a new networking event. You've never met any of these people. How do you get more confidence in that? Well, one simple thing you can do is start with clarity. Like, okay, I'm gonna go talk to people. What's something I'd love to share about myself 
with every new person I meet. Oh, okay, lock that in. Okay, got it. What's one question I could ask every new person I meet? Okay, let me lock that in. Okay, just those two things have been found to dramatically increase people's sense of confidence in social situations. I know what I'm gonna share about myself, I've clarity on it. I know what I'm gonna ask them, I've cleared up. Just those two simple things. The problem with clarity is it's a double-edged sword. A lot of people, their clarity is, I'm awful, I'm worthless, I'm no good. And they've stacked up all these experiences to strengthen that belief. And their clarity is, well, I'm a jerk. I don't deserve success, I won't have success. They've got clarity, but they got the wrong kind of clarity. See, confidence requires positive clarity, not negative self-defeating clarity. So clarity is a double-edged sword. If you believe the wrong thing about yourself, that's going to hurt you too. So what's the opposite of that? Well, I'm going to start viewing myself positively. How can we do that? Well, you know what? Maybe each day for the next 10 days, I'm going to write down a strength that I have. Write down 10 positive things about yourself every day for the next 10 days. Watch what happens for you. It starts shifting your perception of yourself. Here, my little framework, we're going to go from clarity now to congruence. Congruence is living in alignment with what you know is the best of you. Living in alignment with the best of who you are. Living in alignment with your values. When you are not congruent, your brain logs that. And what it says in that log, that log entry, not living your word, not living your truth, not doing what you said you would do. And too many of those negative withdrawals sucks away your confidence. But here's what you need. To be congruent, what do you need? Clarity. You say, okay, these are my values. These are my beliefs. This is what I think is important as a human being, as a parent, as a caregiver, as a leader. Congruence measures whether or not you're doing what you said you're going to do. And that's important. So here's the simplest fix. If you're been pulling too many withdrawals out of that bank account, it's time to put some back in. And so today might be the day you go, where have I been incongruent? Where do I say something and I don't do it? Where are you out of congruence? And can you do the simple acts? Sometimes when you're out of congruence, first you just apologize to yourself. You say, you know what? Gosh, Brendan, I, I haven't been honest with myself. Let's make a change. I think the fastest path back into congruence is an apology. An apology to yourself, an apology to other persons. It takes a lot of guts to say you are wrong. It takes a lot of guts to acknowledge you could do better. This one's fundamental. You get to decide today what to be congruent with. You get to decide who you are and you get to decide to show up and live into that. Third big idea, competence, right? Competence, it's a collection of knowledge, skill, talents, and abilities. The good news is you can increase this. So here's what I want you to do. Every day, every day, I want you to have clarity on what skills you are working on in your life. That's how we're gonna get competence. Competence for too many people comes two years too late. Why? because they wait too long to start developing a skill. Every day, I'm very clear about what I'm trying to improve. Every day I'm learning something, but I'm learning not just casually or, or passively. I'm going, I'm trying to get better at this thing. I want you all to have an ambition to have one or two or three skill sets that you're literally world-class in, that you're world-class in. Not because you need the ego that I am world-class. No, 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 because you need the challenge. You know why a lot of people lack confidence? They never engage challenge. You want more confidence? Engage and challenge more often. The more challenge you engage in and you incrementally improve in it, the more your brain goes, yep, there I did, I did it again. 
And what happens when you don't have confidence, you don't engage in challenge. When you don't engage in challenge, you don't get more competence. So you don't get that competence, confidence loop we were talking about, the flywheel. You all follow? So for those of you, if you're like, but I just lack confidence, like challenge yourself more. But you're like, but I'm lacking confidence. I'm like, exactly, exactly. See, it doesn't, you're going, well, I'll get confidence, then I'll do the challenging things. I'm like, the other way around. The other, you want more confidence, do challenging things more often. When you do challenging things more often, you learn. When you learn, competence, confidence. Connection. When you don't have a connection with yourself or others, confidence goes down. So you want to feel more confident in life? Reconnect with yourself and others. With yourself, that's your morning routine. Lock in that morning routine. The more you feel connected to self, the more confident you are. But you need the time to connect to yourself away from the email, the social media, the obligations for the kids, the family, the husbands, the spouses, the team, everything else. You need that moment where you're like out and connecting with yourself, with your thoughts. You need time to think and to feel again. So turn off the TV, go for the walk. Put down the phone, do the meditation. Get away from the, 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 the social thing one, you know, 10 minutes earlier so you can sit in the car and just think before you go home. You need more space to be thinking and connecting with self. So build that in your life, self-connection. Second part, the most important part, we know environment dramatically shapes your confidence, the connection you have with the people around you. This means be around positive people, contribute around positive people, learn from positive people. It means create great relationships in your life. I want you all to improve this one, simple action, simple daily, weekly, real life action. You must start sharing your real thoughts, feelings, desires, and goals with the people around you. You gotta do it more often. Here's where you lack confidence in life. When you won't share your truth because you're worried what everyone else thinks. That's what high schoolers do. You don't do that anymore. You're too damn old. Now you share your truth with other people and realize most of them won't get it, won't understand why it's important, won't support you, won't care, or at least won't get in your way and say anything at all. But the less you speak your truth to other people, the more superficial your connections are with them. Number five is capability. Competence is the knowing, the knowledge, skill, talent, ability. Capability is you can do it. You can do it every time. It is like a strength, if you will. It is something that is you are highly capable at that thing. You are at another level of skill that it shows up every single time. But here's the truth. Capability, capability is as much as a mindset as a competence. Let me give you an example. A lot of extremely smart people who can handle the problem don't handle the problem because they don't feel capable. It's like, yeah, I know it, but I don't do it. See, there's a difference between knowledge and execution, which is often the difference between competence and capability. See, competence is like the foundation and a stored value, but it's expressed through execution, capability. You want to develop capability? It means you get in the mix, you do the work. You show up, you try. Capability means I know I will execute. That's what to me, confident capabilities. I know I will execute. How do you do that? You have to be more consistent in your execution. You need to be way more consistent in your execution. We talked about decision earlier. Decision is great. Action is required. We've got to get you to execute more of those to-do lists. You want more success? You want more joy? You want more confidence? You got to execute more of the plans. Capability is self-trust to take the action. It's not just, do I know how to take the action? It's, I'm, go, I'm, a, I'm an action taker. I'm going to show up. I'm capable to handle this. I will do this. I trust in myself to handle this, to execute, to execute again and again and again and again and again. That's capability. 
And I really want you to develop that in your heart and in your soul by checking off the simplest of things each day. By if you have a list of three to-do lists, if you wrote down your three top priorities for the day, do those first before you do your social media, before you reply to everyone's DMs, inbox, uh, you know, uh, voice message, text. It's like, listen, I have so many people who uh, they spend all day just checking their email to reply to everybody else. Now that's fine if that's your job, if that's customer service, do that, that's your job. But if you're an entrepreneur, as an example, or you have a whole list of other priorities and you're just checking into other people's agendas all day to meet all their obligations, and you keep missing your key priorities day after day after day after day, your brain doesn't feel like you're capable anymore. Even though you might be smart, you're competent, but your brain doesn't believe you're capable. Last big idea today, contribution. You want confidence, give more. You want confidence, make your difference. You want confidence, do things that matter. Why? Because A, those things are celebrated in the world. Generous giving people tend to have greater what? Connections with other people. Generous giving, caring, hardworking people tend to have what? More clarity about who they are. They're more congruent. These things, they feel more capable. Like generosity, doing things that matter, giving strengthens the whole rest of the model. The whole model drives itself when you've got each of these pieces running, right? Each of these pieces touches one another. Contribution's a key. It really is. Sometimes when you feel so bad about yourself, you're not gonna shake yourself out of that. But what can, shake yourself out of that is service. Sometimes you got to get out of your own head. And to me, what has created a great confidence and reverence for life in my life has been, I've been volunteering most of my life. When you're a volunteer, when you show up for others, when you volunteer to help out, whether it's as simple as helping a friend move or going down to the local soup kitchen or volunteering for that nonprofit cause that you like or, or running that fundraiser, even though you don't know how, those contributions make a difference. Maybe your contribution is your art. Maybe your contribution is your time. Maybe your contribution is financial. Maybe your contribution is mentorship. Maybe your contribution is your content or your book or your work, whatever that is. If you can do the same thing where you can where you can give generously to it, give to your work, be generous to that contribution, be in the moment in when you're serving someone who is in need, you get a little more spirit inside. And when that spirit of goodness is inside, you can share it more too. Here we go, my friends. Hey, it's Brendan Richard. We're gonna dive deep into how do you gain some more emotional mastery in your life so you can handle those difficult times when you get frustrated, when you get down, we get like beat up and like chewed out and spit out by the world. What are you gonna do to be your best self? That is the topic of today's conversation. That emotional mastery is part, that emotional intelligence we hear so much about, that ability to handle the difficulties and challenges of life with grace or a plume or being centered in the midst of all this chaos and turmoil, how do you be your best? That's the topic of today. We're talking about motivation at a deeper level maybe you haven't had with me before. The utmost, most important area of emotional mastery is mastering motivation. Now, when I say emotional mastery, you're like, wait, isn't motivation just a topic, an area? I'm like, no, motivation, motivation is an emotion, right? A motivation is a motion, emotion that you feel that you feel a drive, a sense of hunger, a sense of want, and a sense of desire to make something happen. I believe motivation is one of the most important things we have to master in our total emotional sort of toolkit, right? Because if you can emotionally feel motivated every day, almost everything else can fall in line, right? If you're emotionally motivated to be a better mom, be a better caregiver, be a better parent, 
be a better lover, be a better entrepreneur, be a better business person, be a better contributor to the greater world. When there's a motivation pulling you forward, out of bed each day, into the office, into real life to be your best, then everything changes. When you lose motivation, you and I both know, the loss of motivation is the first gate to suffering. You lose motivation, now you don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like doing anything, you don't work out. You don't feel like working out, you don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like doing anything, you don't want to do your goals. Don't feel like doing your goals, feel unfulfilled. Feel unfulfilled, feel unsatisfied. Feel unsatisfied, feel like life is meaningless. It is a slippery slope when you lose motivation. But the issue is no one has motivation 24-7 all the time. Motivation is an emotion you learn to cultivate by using your mind, your body, your greater consciousness to ensure that you feel that pull of purpose, that you feel that energy inside that says, I want to create, I want to contribute, I want to be my best self, I want to connect with people. And so motivation is something we're going to have to generate on a consistent basis. I know many of you are at HPA and you hear me say, you know, all the time, you have to learn to bring the joy because the power plant doesn't have energy, it generates energy. Motivation is something me, the motivation guy. I have the best-selling book of the entire century with motivation in the title. It's called The Motivation Manifesto, if you haven't read it. And The Motivation Manifesto is like... Uh, if, if anything is, is, is imbued in that book, it is like this ferocity and this fierceness and this tension to living our best lives, but it has to be like generated. Because even though I'm the mot motivation guy, there's plenty of days I wake up and I'm like, <laughs> I don't feel like it. There's plenty of days, there's plenty of moments where just like you, I'm just like, I'd rather be lazy and do nothing right now. And that's okay. That's, that's part of homeostasis. That's part of our our human body to want to power down, to relax, to chill out. But too much of that can lead to an unfulfilling life. So we must learn to generate the emotions of drive, desire, go get in this, whatever you want to call motivation. And so it's something that we have to learn to stoke. Motivation is an emotion we feel by either luck or by purposeful conscious design. I just choose to design it into my day every single day. Motivation is driven by certain things. You have a spark, you have something that sustains it, and something that grows it, okay? The spark of motivation, which is how I anchor into being motivated each day, is ambition. All motivation begins with the desire or hunger and ambition for more, whether that's more depth or more connection or more contribution or more abundance, or more wealth, or more love. Like, we just want more of something. And that says, I want to go get that. Like, we see a fancier car, it's better than our car, I want to go get that. We see, like, a deeper love of relationship between two people, I say, I, I want that in my own life. Sometimes it's a visual cue. Something we see makes us want something, right? I, not too far from here, there's a beach that I strolled on vacation, I don't know, a couple years ago. And I said, I'm going to live here. And it was a motivation. It was a cue. I saw something, desired it, wanted it, went after it. Like, so sometimes it's a visual. It's a cue out in the world that says, I want more of that thing. And ambition can be visually cued. For some people, if you just wake up, I mean, think about it. You wake up, you grab your phone, you're like, you know, and all of a sudden you don't have any motivation. Instead, you look through all this stuff and all it did is make you feel like you're not enough or it distracted you or it upset you or it created, you know, anger or anxiousness. You got to be careful how you're using cues to start your day. I use cues to start my day motivated. And those cues to start my day motivated are things like I literally wake up and uh, I'll wake up and I'll think of things that I'm grateful for and that I want to give in life. I'll wake up and I'll think about someone I want to do something nice for or surprise today. I'll think of something I can be excited about today. I'll as soon as possible in the morning fit, revisit my ambitions list, my goals list. I'll look at them. I'll not wander through the day looking at social media and then, oh, I guess it's time to work and look at my goals. It's like my goals, I mean, in the first few minutes of the day, 
I'm revisiting them. And what I'm doing is when I'm looking at my goals or my agenda or my schedule, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, why do I want this? What would life be like like this? How could I go get it? What should I do today to make that happen? And that motivates me. That's my list of goals, my list of ambitions, the things that can excite me. In other words, it's very intrinsic goals. It's intrinsic rewards that I'm after. I'm like, if I go do that, I will feel better. If I could have this, I'd be happier, right? It's not that I can't be happy with now, but I want to pull. Like if I can have that future pull, that's going to motivate me to go do stuff, right? I have to literally generate that in my mind. And so when I have that connection in the morning, then my takeaway for you is connect with your ambitions every morning, very first thing in the morning. Somehow part of your morning routine, connect with your ambitions. Look at them. Why do you want them? What would you get from that? How would you feel from that? What would that generate? Why would that be more meaningful? Really connect with that ambition every single morning and you'll start to notice you feel better. Because remember, if you were at HPA, if you ever attended our event or our seminar, you also know this reality, that motivation wanes with attention. Meaning, if we don't give our ambitions, our goals, a lot of attention, the motivation just goes away. Because motivation is either fueled by our attention or by momentum, right? It either takes reflection or action to generate serious, sustained motivation. Either reflection or action. Because ultimately, from the reflection, that gives us clarity. And clarity can give us confidence. Or action can give us momentum. And when we have momentum, motivation is way easier to cultivate, generate, and sustain, obviously. So these are really important concepts. Every morning, get very close to your goals. Ambitiously. What are those things that you want, desire, need, and would enjoy? And what do you need to go to get it? That's the intrinsic type of things. The things we'll feel good about. The drive, satisfaction, fulfillment, meaning, excitement in us. But I also have my extrinsic you need my external cues or goals or rewards that also I revisit. So for me, example, when I always tell you, wake up each day and at some point say, who needs me on my A game? For me, every morning, I re-anchor down into my relationships. I think about, okay, if I don't show up today and do a good job, then my wife and I have a lower quality of life then I can't support my mom, then I can't support my team, then all these people who count on me every day for motivation or count on me for leadership or count on me for support, they don't get that from me. And I, you know, I tap into that reality that if I don't show up for somebody today, then you know what, by the end of the night, I'll feel worse about myself, but also it will impact other people. Because you cannot have real, high-powered mental motivation without a connection to other people. We are social animals, so we have to think about, okay, what should I do? How can I contribute in a way that serves other people? So where that internal one is about self and satisfaction and fulfillment and meaning personally, that's tapping into our own passions, desires, wants, and hungers, that external one is ultimately about service, about giving, or taking care of, or being the caretaker of other people. And you cannot just keep starting your day, I guess I'll get some coffee and read the news and see what's on social media, or, or hop into the car and listen to trash talk radio, or turn on the TV, and hope to find motivation later in the day. Like, you want to kick off the day? Kick off the day with motivation. Like, get all ready in the morning, immediately in a good state of mind. When I'm in a great state of mind, it's like, bam, the day goes. And you know what? If you start the morning in the right frame of mind, motivated, driven, because you're connected to what drives you and what will serve other people, then when you start like running out of gas at noon, one, two, or three, it's easier to, to like re-spark that flame than to, you know, or to, to fuel that flame than to start a new fire. Right? Because some people just keep waiting. To, they're, they're, they, don't, they don't even think about, oh, I guess I should be motivated until they've lost it. I want you to start the morning with it and sustain it throughout the day by revisiting it. Remember, the secret to all of motivation is revisiting those whys. 
It's revisiting that ambition that you have for your life, for more, for others, for contribution. That's everything, right? That's everything. And if you get away from that too many days, too many weeks, too many months, I'm just here to tell you, you're really going to struggle. So I hope that helps. Every morning, everybody, every single morning, I really want you to connect with that. Okay, what am I motivated? What am I driven by? And that's going to really... That's, I, I can't explain how much that's going to help you. You will feel it and you will know it if you will do it every morning. Okay, Motivation starts in the morning, but it's also sustained by that morning frame of mind. So that's really key. That's the first idea behind motivation. Connect with your ambitions first thing every single day. Give attention to that every single day. Here's something I don't often talk about, but it's important for me because it's, it's very easy for me to be really effective in the mornings and then that afternoon, two, three o'clock, and I can just be like, man, I want to go outside, take a walk, come back, turn on some Netflix, eat some carbs. <laughs> you know, that can be my afternoon if I'm not careful. So here's what I do. I have a checkpoint in the mid-afternoon to recognize, reward, appreciate Anything that I have done today, anything that I have done today, and that midpoint checkpoint for me on my phone, I just have an alarm. Mine tends to go off around 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It just flashes to me and it says, what's been great today? What's been great today? And so that will cue me, all right, it's time to visit. What's been great today? So I'll just think about something I've done. It could be like, I answered 10 emails today that I have been avoiding. Good job. It can be as simple as, I made that one call, I said I was going to call, did it. I shot that content, created that thing, whatever. Some type, of, like, listen, motivation is often driven by recognition. So recognize what you have done so far in the day, early afternoon. Then what I do, in order to keep myself motivated even more, because I've set in my mind, I want to be a person who's excellence driven, what I will do is I say, okay, Here's what's great so far. And then I ask just a simple question. How do I complete this day with excellence? Just a simple touch point in the afternoon. How do I complete this day with excellence? So I will look at the rest of the day, whether that's two hours more, four hours more, five hours more, six hours more, whatever it's going to be for me. And I go, okay, how do I think through the rest of this day with real excellence? And when I can connect with that, I'm telling you, it's just, it's just so part of me, and it really makes me want to serve. So please think about having a mid-afternoon connection point to keep yourself motivated. You'll feel a whole different quality of life come in. I, I promise it's, it's just a different experience for people because most people, they're just running and gunning through the day. They don't realize uh, or understand or accept how challenging it is to lose motivation. And so they've gone, many people, they've gone weeks without being motivated. They're going through the motions. But there's no energy. There's no emotional pull towards something better. And because they're lacking that emotional pull, what ends up happening? They dog it. They don't contribute as much. They react and sort of create. And all of a sudden, a couple of weeks later, they're like, I don't know why I'm so unfulfilled. Well, no doubt you're so unfulfilled because you haven't been tapping into that emotion of motivation. When we lack motivation, it is a slippery slope to suffering. So please recognize that you must cultivate more motivation. What else can you do? Well, I'll tell you, it's like ambition, attention to those ambitions, effort towards those things. I think all of that is, is really, really, really clear. But I also really believe that a lot of mo motivation is simply lost because of fatigue. So let's say you're doing all those things, but you're wiped out, you're tired. Like a lot of motivation really rests on how you feel physically. If you feel lethargic, you feel tired, you have the flu, it's like it's harder to be more motivated. You can still do it by doing what I've talked about. re yourself, reconnect with those things. But health-wise, it's really critical for you to say, okay, if I want to be motivated long-term, I need to feel greater levels of mobility and energy in my body. 
So if you ever hung around me, I'm constantly bouncing and moving and breathing. And if you've been with me at HPA, you see some of these practices, this breath work that I do, that I'm activating and opening up my body so that my body says, let's go, versus, right? So my body's not like, oh, I ate this terrible thing. Instead, my body says, I feel refueled. I feel ready to go. Let's go. So I manage my sleep, my diet, my health in ways that support my mental clarity and energy. And I know that like sounds, sometimes people think motivation is just a mental game. I'm like, yes, but your mind and your body are connected. If your body is lethargic, so is your mind, right? That brain body connection is real, y'all. And I know you know that. You've been sick, you've been tired. There's other times when you've been out of shape, you feel terrible. So I'm here to encourage you as I always do. If every single month in high performance, I have to cheer you on to get in better health, to prioritize your health, to sleep good, to eat well, to move. If I have to do that every single month, I will do that. I will be your champion. I will cheer you on. I want you in excellent health this year. So please hear me cheer that on every single month because I just know I get you in better health. I get you in better mental health. We get you in better mental health. It's easier to sustain that fire and that drive, that purpose, that motivation. That thing will bring you satisfaction, joy, and meaning. I know you guys get this, but I want to fire you up today. Like this is something you must fire up on your own. This will be fleeting. Of course it's fleeting if you never look at it. I tell you all the time, no wonder you're not motivated. You haven't thought about what motivates you in three days. (laughs) Just think about that. No wonder you're not motivated. You haven't thought about what motivates you in three days. Every morning, I'm a deep dive in what's going to motivate me. I get excited about it. I look at it. I'm like, okay, let's go. If I didn't do that, I need coffee. How do you reignite your life? You know, if, if you're like ready for a big change or you just want more vibrancy and more pop and more joy and more energy into your life so that you can actually feel happy about life, how do you do it? especially if you've been through like a dark period of time and you're just like, I really, I just want to turn back on, you know? Maybe you're coming through a breakup or a divorce or you've started a new business or you just recognize like, hey, for the last six months, you've kind of sucked. You know, life has just not been good. It's just been like upsetting and you're like, I need something new. I need to revivify. You know, you're in that place where you're like, I just need some new pop in my life, Brendan. How do I reignite? Well, some of you guys know I did a whole course on this with the Oprah Winfrey Network back in the day, but I've been really thinking about it lately because so many people are asking, like, okay, I feel like so much negativity. I want more positivity and joy in my life, but I also need to change because a lot of people right now, they're in transition. You know, they had this part of their life and now the career change. And they're like, oh, I'm in this part of my life. And they want to do it better. So this still applies to you. So how do you reignite your life? I got four big ideas. I call it the four Ps. Okay. The first way to reignite your life is not to have a midlife crisis and become a metaphor. Okay. What I mean is that most people, what they do is they think, well, I'm, I must have to move. I got, I got to move to a whole new location. I see, Brendan, you moved to Puerto Rico. It's great. I guess I got to move my life. No, my life was already ignited. I didn't have to move somewhere to find it. You don't have to be in a new relationship, start a new career, move to that new town. Often, when we want to reignite our life, we look for these big things. Well, I'll I'll feel good when I win the lottery or that perfect thing happens. You're waiting for that perfect thing to happen in order to feel good. And that makes you a novice in personal development. And I say that with all respect because we all do that at some point. I can recognize time in my life. I'm like, Brendan, why didn't you feel better at that stage of your life? Because I wasn't using my mind well. And so I learned that if you want to reignite your life, don't think it has to be this big, abrupt, sudden, crazy change. Those can be great, but if those aren't well thought out, it becomes a train wreck and a midlife crisis versus an intentional new way of being. Because listen, that's how you reignite your life. An intentional, new way of being. And that's what these four Ps are really going to be about. A new way of being for you. We don't have to change your marriage or your career. I'm not saying those things might not need to change, but you can reignite your life by starting with these four Ps. The first P is presence. Learning to be more present in the moment, more mindful and appreciative 
of what you already have that you've been missing. So many people think that they need something new to make them feel good when I'm like, but didn't you see what your child just did? How cute was that? Or didn't you just notice that you do have more abundance than 50% of the world? Did, didn't you notice that today went by, no one shot at you? Nobody tried to stab you? Didn't you understand that today there was no crime in your house? Like if that's true for you, you're lucky. And what happens is we lose our perspective and we become people who are always attached to the next moment or the previous moment and we're not here. And I've always found that when you can learn to get in this moment and you can breathe and use your breath to engage in this moment and you can notice the small things in this moment and just be in the moment, that when I'm here in the now, in this moment, I will always be happier. I will always notice things. I will always feel a sense of connection with life. The reason a lot of people are unhappy and they feel like they have to reignite it is because they become disconnected. They become disconnected with themselves. They become disconnected in their relationship. They become disconnected in their career. And the only thing they're connected to anymore is their phone, right? They're, the only time there's any presence when they're like, ah, and they've lost presence with the moment with this breath, with this joy of being alive. Like, I, I hope that you realize the ultimate way to reignite your life is to first have reverence for life. And if you have reverence for life, you connect with the moment. You have fun with the moment. You dance with the moment. It's all here. It's already here. You're already alive. You already won the lottery of this crazy cosmos that all these billions of cells aligned perfectly to make you right now? Please, you forgot this moment. You forgot the magic of now and you're looking for tomorrow to make you happy when it's right here. It's a choice, it's a decision, it's an intention, it's a reconnection with the moment each day. Stop going through the day, going through the motions. Reconnect with the minute. Take notice of your breath. Take notice of what you're paying attention to. Appreciate the small things. Be present now, because trust me, if you can't learn to be present now, where you don't feel like life is going great, when it becomes great, you won't notice either. Trust me, I coach some of the highest level people in the world and I always find this to be true. They have everything and they're still not happy because they never trained themselves in the practice of presence. The second P that I think is so critical is people engagement. And that is, if you want to reignite your life, the way to do that is in your current relationships, the people you already interact with, the people you already love, the people you already lead, the people you already work with, I want you to re-engage them again. You got distracted and you thought that you know everything about them. You don't know a lot about your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, the people who you're working with. They are infinitely complex. But what you do is you shorthand them. You kind, of, you kind of like take them for granted. You stop asking them the questions. You stop engaging them deeply. And without depth in relationships, we'll never feel like life has its pop. Life has its pop when you're in a relationship with people and it's this deep and real and curious thing that you honor the mystery in other people enough that you ask them questions, that you explore what they think, what they feel, what they need, what they desire. That curiosity with other people lights you up, man. But you take them for granted because you've been around them for a while. Yeah, you know your kids. Yeah, you know your husband. Yeah, you know your friends. But you don't. And once you accept that, it becomes like a curious thing again. I mean, think about all of the vibrancy and the pop that you had at the beginning of your relationship with somebody. Remember those first couple weeks of dating? It was just like magic and fire because you're learning so much about the person. And you're just like, oh, yeah, I learned this about the person. You tell your friends, oh, and she's like this and he's like that, it's so cute. It's because you were curious about them. You didn't, you didn't pretend you know everything. But so many of us take our relationships for granted and we're missing the very thing right in front of us. Just like presence, it's right in front of you. The people in your life are there to make your life come alive. You forgot that they're a tool for that. They're an ends, they're a means, they're a experience. They are there with you and for you in your life to make life have pop. And don't blame them if they're not giving you that. 
because that's what we do. Well, she's just negative. She's terrible. They, they don't support me, Brendan. Yes, I understand. And that might be true. But if you haven't fully tried to re-engage them and been present with them, don't expect them to do it for you. So first, take ownership. Ask, have I really poured myself into these relationships? Getting to know these people and dig, diving deep. I mean, think about when someone does move to a new town. Why is it so magical? New people they can ask questions to and get to know. Well, they had people at their house too, but they forgot to do that. So I hope that makes sense. Re-engage the people around you. There is vibe and pop there like you just can't even imagine. Third P is probably the, not, it's not a sexy one. I, I gotta tell you, it's planning. Planning. The reason a lot of people want to reignite their life is because they're frustrated with where they are. They're not having the momentum behind them. They recognize they have unbelievable potential and they have not been activating it. And why? Because they have been leaving their growth. They have been leaving their momentum. They have been leaving their goals to randomness. Let's just see what happens every day. See what happens every day. See what happens every day. See what happens. And if every day is, I guess I'll just see what happens. Guess what the odds are in a month? Nothing happened. Two months, nothing happened again because the world is good at letting you sit on your laurels. The world is good at it passing you by and not bringing new opportunities. Yes, sometimes we're lucky and new things come into our lives and it changes us. But often we've got to architect that. We have to strategize it. We've got to structure it and we've got to schedule it, baby. You have to think about that. You, you have to take back the strategy and the structure and the scheduling for you to get ahead. What does this mean? It means planning. It means I need to be able to show up in your house. You need to be able to open up your laptop or show me on a wall somewhere or on a, on a piece of paper at the kitchen table. Here's my plan, Brendan. Here's what I'm excited to do. Even if all that shows me is what's my ideal day look like? I'm trying to work towards that every day, Brendan. It doesn't have to be your, you know, your mission to go to Mars. It can just be like, here's what an ideal day would look like for me. I'm going to hit it more often than not. It's just a plan. And, and without a plan, without knowing what your next month is about, we end up going month to month to month flailing about. And then one day we're going, I'm kind of miserable. And I don't know why. I'm like, I know why. Because you're the same as you were five years ago. And we all have within our heart and our soul the growth imperative. It's in us by biology, evolution, God, whatever you want to call it. We are meant to grow and to try to reach the rim of our full potential. But that can't be done without some planning. So think about what do you want next month? What does your ideal days look like? What are the big goals and projects you want to work towards? Bust them down, put them in the calendar, start building knowledge, skills, and ability to be able to achieve those faster. And that's getting you a little momentum because momentum makes life come back to full color. Got it? Other idea I think is really important is that as you're striving towards this, the fourth P is peaceful progress. One reason that people want to reignite their life isn't just because they didn't get where they wanted to be. One reason often is because where they got, they can't sustain it and they don't want to do it that way anymore. They burnt themselves out. They hustled themselves in the ground. They ground and ground and ground and they were in the grind philosophy and they cheated their relationships. They cheated their health. They cheated their joy. They stole away their presence because the way they were striving was not present, but also was not peaceful. You got to meet life with peace. Yes, there's that warrior part of us. Yes, there's that grind part of us. But if you ground yourself into exhaustion, that's why you feel like you need to reignite. That's why people love to go away to a, a week long detox somewhere because they're like, I need to turn off the phone. I need to eat healthier. I need to work out. I need to take care of myself because self care is part of peaceful progress. To take care of yourself as you are striving isn't a luxury, is a necessity for long-term performance. As many of you guys know, I conducted the world's largest study that's ever been done on high performers, which are essentially the top 15% of the most accomplished people in any field, any art, any endeavor. And these top 15% people aren't superhuman, but one thing they are doing 
is they are striving more satisfied. They are joyous on their journey. They are happy with the path. They're not waiting for the destination or the outcome, and they're not grinding themselves in the ground every day with work. Rather, they're peaceful. They're, they're, there's a sense of centeredness to how they are proceeding through life. You ever meet somebody like that? They walk in the room and they're just so grounded and so centered and so peaceful, and you're like, gosh, I wish I had some of that. You gotta practice yourself into that. So for some of you who, who just, you feel like always stress, always anxiety, always frustration, always nervousness, always like hustle, 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 geez, please teach yourself to meditate. Simple, close your eyes, 20 minutes a day, five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, and just release your thoughts and release the tension in your body. If you need a training on that, just Google me on YouTube and type in release meditation technique. The release meditation technique. I have a whole other video just like this where I teach how to meditate. Um, two million people have learned to meditate for me. I'm super honored by that. It's something simple that can give you a daily break from all the noise in your head that can steal away your presence, steal away your connection with other people, steal away the motivation to pursue all that planning that you did. Because listen, you can do all those things, but if you're completely hectic, freaked out, anxious, upset, all the time and you're exhausted, there is no way. We cannot reignite your life without managing your self-care better. And I know you know all these things, but this is my invitation to you to explore. Or are you leaving any of this? Have you forgot your presence, the deep connection you have with people? Have you not been planning and have you been progressing just with just like all the time versus joy? You deserve to have a vibrant, joyous, connected, excellence-filled life. That's what we always talk about in HPX. It's my brand, right? The high performance experience, HPX, high performance experience. That's what we all want. We all want that next level of experience. We all want to reignite and feel alive and have that fire inside. So try these four practices. See, see if they help you. Comment down below. Tell us what you think. Share this video. Build a community of people who are positive, who are enlightened, who are conscious, who are excited about life because that will also help you reignite it all, my friends. Energy mental and physical and spiritual strength or vibrancy. I just call it energy in high performance training. What is my energy? Do I have the energy to serve? Do I have the energy to focus? Do I have the energy to go to the gym? Do I have the energy to be nice to my spouse and my partners and my friends? Do I have the energy to do the work today? Like for me, when my energy is low or it is dipping, I always, always go, what? is causing that. It's almost always two things. It's almost like if my energy dips low in the day, I always know there's two culprits. One, something happened that bothered my brain. I got annoyed, frustrated, or hurt by something. I got annoyed, frustrated, or hurt by something. And it happened recently. It happened in the last day or two. And it's affecting my energy right now. Your energetic state right now is a hangover. Your mood right now is a hangover effect. Not always negative, it can be positive. But it's, it's an effect of something, right? Input, output, cause, effect. That's real. So I'm like, okay, well, what, what has hooked me? What has angered me? What has frustrated me? And then I'll do something like Byron Katie's um, teaching on the work. And I'll just flip the question or I'll flip the feeling. I'll say, okay, what would my life be like without that thought? Is that thought true? What's the opposite of that thought? And I'll just question those things that annoy me, frustrated or hurt me. And then I'll do the physical work again of releasing those things. And if I need help with releasing those, many of you guys know, I love and invested in the tapping solution. So I'll just tap. I'll just Go into my mind, for those who know tapping, and I'll just do a tapping routine. For those who want to learn tapping, you can learn it in the Growth Day app. There's a course in there on it already. And so I'll just do something physical to release that tension. But again, I said there's two reasons probably for my low energy. It's one, something mentally or emotionally, you know, it hooked my brain. 
and it's lowering the quality of energy I feel in life. The second one for me, which is big, is the last 72 hours of physical exercise and nutrition. It's like you feel right now what you consumed and how you moved in the last 72 hours. Most people think it's only during the day. No, the, the food you ate three days ago, that's still in your body. The supplement, the nutrition from that, uh, the macros from that, whether you burned it off or not, the energy, the energetic effect culminates one day, two days, three day. And that's why sometimes people, if you've ever done a, a cleanse or something, you don't feel that much different in the first day or two, but by day three or four, you start like getting like this amazing clarity. Why? that 72 hour cycle of biology that we humans have. It's why when I know I'm gonna teach a seminar to y'all, like I'm gonna go, you know, like I, I've been blessed to, uh, a lot of the industry knows, we teach the single two hardest events in the world. When it was High Performance Academy and then Certified High Performance Coaching, these are literally nine hours a day on stage, often by myself uh, and used to be, now I've got a little smarter about it, but it was intensely difficult. And if you see me on stage, I'm not sitting like I am now in this little room in quarantine. I'm like bouncing the whole time. We're dancing the whole time. I'm running back and forth, the flip chart down in the audience, walking around. I do a marathon a day in steps, jumps, and movement, right? It's unbelievable. I got to eat three times the calories to pull off each of those days. And I can tell you when I'm on stage and I'm not feeling it, I don't go, wow, what just happened last hour? I'm like, okay, what was the last three days here? When was I moving? How was I recovering? What was I eating? When was I moving? How was I recovering? What was I eating? And I'll run that through over and over and I'll identify. I'm like, oh, you know what? There was that one hour after that stage, I was all hyped. I didn't eat. Or, oh, you know what? There was that time. You know what? I, I should have I spent another 20 minutes uh, meditating or sleeping. or I just run back. So I want you to do that. Anytime you don't feel well, I really want to cue you to develop the habit. This is like my advanced habit. If I don't feel well, I'm like, okay, 72 hours. What hooked my brain or my ego, maybe frustrated, angry, upset? Let me release that right now. That's the first thing, a release technique again. Second thing is, okay, have I moved and what did I eat? So it's like, oh, on Friday, I had those three glasses of wine versus that one Got it. That's a lingering effect. Uh, okay, that's good. That's good to know. Or oh, you know what? I really just wanted to cheat, and I did. But now I'm really I'm paying for it. And listen, I'm not here to judge anybody. Whatever you want to eat, consume the stuff that you do. Not my business. My business is reminding you that wellness is experience of life, and you have either defined what wellness looks like and feels like to you, or you have not. And because I have, this is so important to me. I hate when I don't have this. Lacking energy to me is so painful that I structure my life to ensure I have it. I, I don't know about you, but I've laid in hospital beds for days. I don't know about you, but I've served in hospice and saw people who couldn't get out of bed and had their last breaths. I don't know about you, but I've had those times on stage or service or moments with family or friends when I didn't feel energy and because I didn't feel energy, I didn't do a good job for them. And I hated those moments. I want to do a good job for people. And I think to do a good job for people, I got to care for my energy. And so I always tell people, if you haven't gotten healthy for yourself yet, do it for the people around you who are getting the shrapnel of your bad energy, bad energy, negative energy. There's shrapnel from that. There's emotional trauma from that. There's stuff from that that we got to make sure we release and not hold on to. And I know you guys know all this, but I hope it helps you. Your, the practice I have is a 72-hour assessment of my energy. Whenever I dip, I'm like, let me do my little 72 hours. Where was my ego hooked, annoyed, or hurt? Let me let that go. What was my fueling routine, my movement routine? Oh, no wonder I feel like crap. I've been sitting for three days. Oh, my back is mad. I forgot to stretch. 
I didn't open up my body and my breath with a workout, a walk, a bike, a run, a hike. I didn't move. No wonder. Oh, gosh, let me go. Uh, come on, honey, let's go for a walk. And just get, get that movement back in. Get that movement back in. For those who have studied me with high performance work before, I recommend like a two by two or a three by three. Uh, all that means is like every, you know, twice a week, you do a, you know, high intensity workout at least twice a week or three times a week. You do uh, three times a week. You do a, you know, 60, I'm sorry, a two by two is once a week you do uh, a, a hit training and once a week you do a 60 minute cardio training. That's a two by two. Um, a three by three is you're just adding more to that. So you're doing a, uh, like a one, uh, uh, one session hit, one session long cardio, one session, some other type of movement that you love to do that just opens up your body and gives you flexibility, maybe like a yoga or something. But whatever your routine is, did you move? Everyone knows the number one challenge to long-term health is nutrition and movement. Number one and number two. And people always say, no, 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 it must be sleep. I'm like, number one and number two are the greatest weapons you have for greater sleep. It is your nutrition and it is your physical movement that gives you the ability to sleep well. Now, guess what? When you have reverence for life and you're releasing that tension throughout the day, emotionally, letting go of that ego or that hurt, now you sleep like a baby. Like I've been blessed with sleep for a long time, not because it came natural, because I sucked at it. And I said, I got to get better at this. So I changed my nutrition. I moved more. I did more emotional releasing of tension. And those are part of my days. Remember, wellness is not something you do once in a while. It is the experience of life. You, you have to do these many times a day. Also, for those who've studied for a long time, with energy, every 45 minutes, I'm up. I'm bouncing. I'm moving. I'm opening up all the meridians on my body. I'm taking 10 deep breaths and bouncing in place and closing my eyes to rest. That energetic movement every hour, that breath work every hour, that opening meridians every hour, it's how I'm annoying all the time. It's like you're like, you just hang out with me like, wow, that guy goes all day. And he's just, he's in it all day. I had to train that. You're training your focus right now. You're training your energy. You're training your ability to serve. It's happening right now. And it happened last 72 hours too. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.